thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman Obernolte, and thank you for having this meeting, and, and thank you, Secretary Granholm, uh, for being here. And uh, I'm going to get into a topic which I know that's not going to be popular, but I, I think it's really important. Um, and so, Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to insert four articles into the record detailing Secretary Granholm's various ethics issues and two articles from the Department of Energy's website concerning its ethical policies. First, without, I just want to... Without exception. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an article from Reuters. Uh, U.S. Secretary, uh, Energy Secretary Granholm violated ethics laws, Watchdog says. An article from CNN. Biden touts electric car company potentially worth millions for his energy secretary. Uh, from Washington Free Beacon, Energy Secretary's husband held stock in Ford as administration approved billions in electric vehicle subsidies. Next article from Fox News, Biden Energy Secretary Granholm admits false testimony about owning stocks. The next I want to just point out and, and put these for the record, Mr. Mr. Chair, just so people have them. These are ethics, 14 principles of ethical conduct for federal employees. That's right on the Energy uh, website. Ethics, impartiality in performing official duties. Uh, want to be sure that. Objection. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So since taking office, I know uh, Secretary or uh, my colleague, Mr. Iser, referred to some of these issues. But since taking office in January of 2021, Secretary Granholm has violated the Hatch Act multiple times. She's owned Proterra stock while her boss, President Biden, repeatedly promoted the company. We saw this huge payout. Uh, she admitted three months after she took office. Her husband owned Ford stock while she personally promoted the company's work with official resources, and she cashed in on millions of dollars after these illegal transactions and failure to disclose obvious conflicts, conflicts were revealed. As you said, you, it took you uh, three months before you actually sold the stock. And most critically, she lied under oath to Congress, claiming she did not own any individual stocks when, in fact, she did. Anyone disputing these charges could consult to these articles that I've put in the record. They're available for everyone. And uh, I just want to go to uh, Madam Secretary. The DOE's ethical rules, uh, or federal, generally federal employee ethics laws, provide that, quote, public service is a public trust. Employees must place loyalty to the Constitution, the laws, and ethical principles above gain, as I cited in the ethical principles that are part of your own department. Do you believe that any Department of Energy or other federal employee violating this rule should resign or be removed from office for this position? First of all, let me say that we take ethics That's a yes very, or no question. Do you think if someone violates very, the ethical laws set forth in this, that you, you said you signed a statement, uh, an ethical statement that you would comply with the laws, do you think that a DOE employee or other federal employee who violates these laws should step down from that position? Is that that's a yes or no? If they violate the ethics laws, I understand forth, what you're you, trying to do. Well, here. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm asking trying, you a specific no, question. Okay, you so have, you're not going to answer made the question. A number of allegations that I feel I, I put against me I'm personally. A, this is that my time, I, Mr. I, I know, Mr. Chairman. But you've um, made these out there, and I feel it is let me important just, to Let me respond. just tell you, this is what you you. Uh, you did not answer the yes or no question. You obviously believe that it's okay to violate the ethics rules. Of course, I done. do not believe it's but okay let's, let's to violate ethics laws. It, nor does anyone else in the right, Department so of Energy. This is my time. So what you're trying to say is afterwards, once I realized and I spoke to Congress that I was not telling the truth about what was happening, I went back and admitted, oh, I made a mistake. So admitting the truth after being caught lying doesn't actually cure perjury. I don't know if you know that legally. I know you're an attorney. So you've admitted to testifying falsely and then came back and said, I corrected it later. But that doesn't cure the fact that you actually committed perjury. We've actually impeached presidents uh, over committing perjury. And this is actually in, involved in your, in your official duties. Also, after signing an ethics uh, oath that you said that you signed and admitted to today, and on top of admitting that it was three months after you took office, that you actually sold the stock on the private market, as, as Daryl, uh, uh, Congressman Issa put out. So to me, that's perjury, and that's simple. That's, that's perjury, period. Why should you not resign, or why should we not consider uh, some kind of impeachment inquiry into you for your perjury charges? We've done that with presidents of the United States in the past. Number one, I made a mistake when I testified saying that I had sold all stock. 
I honestly so, thought we had. So wait but a minute. I was so, wrong. so I'll reclaim my so, time. You're a lawyer. You know that perjury, you cannot go you back and say I made a mistake. Perjury exists when you give a false statement under oath, which you did. Oh, did you not? No, I did not intentionally. I thought we had divested of all stocks. We had divested Look, this of is, all. This is the colossal ego stocks. of this administration that people and the American people are frustrated with. You serve the American people. You don't serve President Biden. You don't serve a special interest. You serve the American people. Of and course. We would appreciate you coming forward on this. I am coming forward if you would let me explain. Uh, Look, I appointees with lesser conflicts, honestly, would have withdrawn their nomination or they would resign from office. Thank you. I yield back. My There's mind. no conflict. The OIG has investigated the Proterra issue uh, and then determined that there was no gentleman conflict. Gentleman yields back. Uh, we'll go next to the gentlewoman from Oregon, Ms. Salinas. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank the chair and ranking member for holding this hearing today. And like my colleague from Illinois, I too am not here for the politics, but I do believe we need to set the record straight. This is the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, and facts are really important. So Secretary Granholm, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I think we've taken up way too much time, but um, and I do have some important questions to ask around gas prices. You've been asked repeatedly about your connection to Proterra with a lot of conjecture and speculation thrown in for good measure. But let's, again, understand the facts before we go any further. Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask for unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter sent by the Inspector General of the Department of Energy from um, actually the Trump administration on August 11th, 2021, Ms. Terry Donaldson to Senator John Barrasso on, on August 11th. In the letter, the Inspector General Donaldson responds to a request from the Senator to scrutinize, and in quote, Secretary Granholm's financial interest in Proterra. The Inspector General's findings were definitive, and I quote, Secretary Granholm publicly disclosed her interests in and position with Proterra. She complied with the terms of an ethics agreement designed to prevent violations of ethical restrictions while serving as secretary. Our inquiries did not identify evidence that Secretary Granholm violated existing statutes or regulations with respect to her financial interest in Proterra. We found no evidence indicating Secretary Granholm worked on specific issues related to Proterra at the same time she owned options for or shares of Proterra. Those findings, and that end quote, those findings remain true today. In fact, the department confirmed to committee staff that DOE has not directed any funding to Proterra during Secretary Granholm's tenure. These are the facts. And so Secretary Granholm, I will only um, ask you one question on this issue before we move to more important matters. Can you assure us once again that you have complied with all legal and ethical obligations in regards to Proterra as the DOE Inspector General determined in I, 2021? I can assure you. Thank you. And now to a question that is um, important to my district. Diesel and jet fuel prices have climbed even faster than other fuels. And these heavy fuels are more easily refined from Russian and Middle Eastern crude than U.S. shale making them even more susceptible to international pressures. Since July, gas, as you know, is up nine cents at the pump, but diesel prices have risen 48 cents in that same amount of time. In Oregon, we have companies such as Next Clean Fuels, um, which are planning large new biofuel facilities to produce renewable diesel and jet fuels. However, these facilities take time to build, and my constituents are facing high costs right now. Can you provide an update on DOE support for biofuel infrastructure, and the steps that we can take to bring these fuels to market more rapidly and further reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Yeah, thank you so much for this question as well, because um, obviously the infrastructure is important and the fuel itself is important. So we have a whole strategy on biofuels, uh, especially as it relates to um, making sure that people are aware of, for example, sustainable aviation fuels and the tax credits associated with those, making sure that we have got infrastructure that um, is not contributing to the cost and that infrastructure, whether it's refinery uh, infrastructure or the uses of diesel itself inside of vehicles, uh, we wanna make sure we have engines uh, and biofuel, um, a biofuel pipeline for, uh, that is lower cost. 
we've been working on both the transportation side as well as the infrastructure side for a, a long time, and we will continue to do so, but it has been propelled uh, significantly by the incentives associated with the Inflation Reduction Act, and we're very grateful for that. And so um, dovetailing off the, of that, the USDA has also traditionally provided significant support for biofuel research and development. And as you roll out some of these programs from IIJA and IRA, how are you coordinating with agencies like the U.S. Department of Agriculture to maximize the impact of these investments? Yeah, we have a we we definitely work with the Department of Agriculture on this, especially. I mean, they're they're they have been uh, they've got a series of funds that they have been supportive of biofuel development, um, whether it's refineries, uh, making sure that we have the supply associated with feedstock. Uh, and, and so we do, we, we have worked together with uh, the Department of Agriculture very closely. We've also got, as far as our own uh, strategy, I just want to turn here, um, you know, we have, um, a, we have an earth shot that is associated with this called Clean Fuels and Products where we want to make sure that we are taking feedstocks that are not, uh, you know, that are all kinds of feedstocks to be able to reduce greenhouse gases. We've got a whole uh, series of pieces of infrastructure, like at the Idaho National Lab, to be able to do that. Uh, it's called BUFNUF, uh, the biofuel, um, it's a biofuel, um, uh, um, national biofuel, uh, I can't remember the acronym, but bottom line is it's a facility that is, um, uh, an applied strategy on how you can have distributed um, biofuel creation from various sources of feedstock. Um, and we've got biofuel uh, resource centers, four of them across the country, to be able to continue the research on biofuels. So there's a strategy from the Sustainable uh, Aviation Fuel Grand Challenge to the Inflation Reduction Act to the Earth Shots of Clean Fuels to the biofuel uh, um, uh, centers and to the labs, uh, all as part of a continuum uh, to be able to lower the cost and create more supply of biofuels. Thank you. I yield back. The gentlewoman yields back. We'll hear next from the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Franklin. You are.